Oh, wonder who this could be. Hello? Hey Dad, I know I'm coming around in a few days to bake and I was just wondering if there's any particular things you wanted me to add into the mix? Well, leave it up to you to be honest, but uh, I did have a vegan cake recently that was very surprisingly good. Okay, and I'll try and make it wombat themed to some extent too. Yeah, that'd be great. See you in a couple of days. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. Here he is! Hi Dan! Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Come on in. I've just been promising the fact that coffee is inside. It is. It's freshly brewed. Freshly brewed. Uh, apologies for the tight Oh no, squeeze. this is typical London abode. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do much cooking in this lounge. No. Funnily enough. <laughs> Dan has made me a lovely cup of coffee. Cheers. And we've got more to come as well. Just before we start the actual bake, I just thought I would show you what I'm thinking. I have made in the past Anzac koalas, another Australian animal, but I was thinking, let's do Anzac wombats. Has anyone ever made you a wombat bake? No, quite simply. But I know you were saying about wombat poo. <laughs> Yeah, we've had a lot of people point out to us that they are cube shaped. They are cube shaped, wombats yeah. poo squares. So, a sort of side note to this bake, as well as making Anzac wombats, we're gonna be making sort of like a Rocky Road-esque wombat poo in an ice cube tray. Ooh, yeah. So keep watching. <laughs> what, is, uh, what is Anzac? An Anzac biscuit, it's a sweet biscuit popular in Australia and New Zealand, made with oats, flour, sugar, coconut, butter, syrup, baking soda and water. Oh, wow. So we're going to be making it vegan by using like a dairy-free butter, but you can use obviously whatever butter you've got to hand. And then we've got chocolate covered almonds for the nose. And then the fur, it's a misc of sort of bourbon biscuits, which are accidentally vegan. And then just one Weetabix, because it gives more that fluffy ah. fur. Have you ever done the Weetabix challenge? No. Where you have to eat as many Weetabix as you can, but Dry. without drinking water. Oh, it's, it's impossible. Have you done it? Yeah, I did once in my student days. Um, real Wait, proud moment. Do you want to do it again today? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> We're going to measure the dry ingredients into a bowl. Put in 100 grams of oats. Yeah. That's like the base of our cookie. It's a bit like a flapjack. And then 100 grams of, I've got golden caster sugar here, but if you had caster sugar, you could use that. You could even use light brown or muscovado. It will just sort of change the color and taste of your Anzac biscuit slightly. Looks like a wombat paws it have been in look there. It does like sugar. a wombat paws have been in there. There it is. Which wombat? Uh, mine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And then 100 grams of desiccated coconut. Yeah. Straight on top. We're making a good batch of wombats, but if you wanted to make half the amount, then obviously just use 50 grams of everything. There we go. Bang on. And then 100 grams of plain flour going in. That's our dry ingredients. So if you just want to give that a little mix. This is dairy-free butter. So this is if you wanted to make these vegan, yeah. but you could as well just use normal butter. A little bit more. Oh, nailed that it. That was bang on. We want a tablespoon of golden syrup. Okay, so 25 grams. 25 grams. No, that there is perfection. Go. Sweeter the better. So we've just got the butter and the syrup in the pan, and we're gonna now take it into your kitchen to melt. We are now going to be adding some magic ingredients to the syrupy mixture. So this is going to give your Anzac cookie a nice sort of like crispy crunch. Bring the coffee in the mix. Oh yeah. I'm going to do a teaspoon of bicarbonate soda and then we want a tablespoon of coffee. I've never actually used coffee in this, but when in Rome or at a Wombat's flat. Yeah. So it's going to go in the pan with the bicarb and then going to mix that all together and it sort of starts to froth all up and then we're just going to transfer that into the dry ingredients. They don't call me Dan the Mixer Haggis for nothing. Do you like haggis? Uh, I bet you've yeah. been asked that before. I mean, every time I go to Scotland, it, they're like, can, can we see your driver's license, please? Because this is, well, A, they don't believe you, but also it's obviously kind of quite rare. It's about 50 grams. You're just like getting the mixture together and you're just putting them down on the tray and then you just want to flatten them slightly. They will spread a little bit in the oven, but like I said, these are more like Anzac cookies rather than the traditional really flat Anzacs. Ooh, 48 grams. Is there a prize if you get 50 bang on? Do you want there to be a prize? Kind of would like a little prize maybe. What should the prize be? Answers <laughs> down below. A little cheer. Ooh, 49. That's worth a cheer. Hooray. Hooray. 
Do you know, Dan, what the UK number one was when you were born? Michael Jackson? No. I mean, you'd do well if you didn't know. Queen? No, sadly not. Genesis? No. I don't know, I think you're gonna have to Should tell me. i put you me. out of your misery. Frankie goes to Hollywood, relax. Oh, right. And then, fellow Scouser, wasn't it? Exactly. And then Murph was also Frankie goes to Hollywood. Oh, wow. But two tribes. Okay. And then Todd was actually fame. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you all together. <gasps> 51. 51, about just a cheer. So have you guys got sort of similar tastes in music? Yeah, all fairly similar. Like when we first got together, we kind of bonded over Radiohead, Smashing Pumpkins, also like Elliot Smith and yeah. there's more folky stuff. It's nice when you've got some different tastes, but also you need to have the common ground a little bit because, and you need to have some of the same references to be able to explain what you're thinking maybe for a section of a song or whatever. Do you guys all like the Beatles though? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about a favourite Beatles track? I know that's really difficult to choose. I'll say Blackbird simply uh... because it was like this guitar piece that I wanted to learn like so badly when I was young. I had a friend who could play it. Yeah. And I was just, you know, I was like 14 or whatever and just always used to say, can you just play that song again? It's still one of the go-to songs, you know, and I pick up a guitar, just start playing it. Oh my life. It's such a lovely guitar part. It's oh, just bro. Is there a particular lyric that, if you had it on a t-shirt or something that just particularly stands out? I actually like in one of our new songs, Ready for the High, there's a, a lyric, I should be thinking moonbeams, which I really like. And the idea, you could have someone's head there with just moonbeams like exploding out the head. Yeah, something. Because I love the artwork for the new album. So that's E-Boy, their artwork's so cool. And yeah, Memphis was just like, oh, I wonder if he'd be up for it and he was and kind of once he agreed to doing it then it influenced all the kind of the, whole, the artwork yeah. in general we've pretty much got our cookies there or mm. you can just eat it raw like me and Dana. so we're going to take these through lovely. to the oven and they bake for about 10 to 15 minutes till they're sort of like slightly golden brown mm. i'll leave you eating there <laughs> they smell good Ooh. oh wow here we go one lot Obviously, you can just cool them on a cooling rack as most normal people do, but we're just coming outside here. Cool them a little bit quicker. Yeah, on the chilly rooftops on of London. On the chilly rooftops of London. Chim chimini, yeah, chim there chimini, you go. Chim this is a real musical bonanza <laughs> we've got in store for you. We are going to create the toppings to turn them into Wonzaks. Wonzaks? Wonzaks, I like that. <laughs> Did you know bourbons are accidentally vegan? I didn't. Would that be a biscuit of choice, Dan? I do like a bourbon. Bourbon, bourbon. 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 Yeah. What would be your absolute biscuit of choice? Probably just a regular digestive. Really? Not even chocolate covered? Yeah, chocolate, yeah. Um, Milk or dark? Dark. You could obviously make wombat fur with dark chocolate digestives, but we're going bourbons. You want five bourbon biscuits, and then to create like that sort of more tufty fur, a Weetabix. Put that all in a like a sandwich bag, and then this is when your drumming is going to come in to throw. Oh, yeah. So just beat it with a rolling pin or a drumstick. I have a drumstick as well. You can see which one works best. There we go. We'll do a test. That works really well. You've got to try and guess which song. Okay. If you ever leave. No, ready for the high. Ready for the high. You can go rolling. Oh yeah. Rolling, rolling. There we go. But you're going to break into Limp Bizkit then. <laughs> You toured with the Rolling Stones, didn't you? Uh, we did one show with them, yeah. That Listen, was... one show is enough. Oh, one show is definitely more than I ever thought we'd get to play with them. All our family came over as well to it. Got to see Charlie Watts play as well before he sadly passed away. Oh, so did he pass on stunning. some drumming? I said to him, uh, thanks so much for your music and beats. I spent many an hour learning to play along to uh, the Stones in my teenage years. And he was like, Okay, cool. Great to know. Like, you know, it was very, like, they're just, they were all just really nice. If we were to add a Rolling Stones track to the Bacon playlist, is there oh, any yeah. one you particularly like in there? I'd say, like, Wild Horses for the end of the playlist, yep. but then Sympathy for the Devil is a great opening to the playlist. We could maybe put both on. We could sandwich, yeah, sandwich we could it, it. And as everyone knows, the playlist can be found on the website or via Spotify. But we've now got a bag full of wombat fur. Cheeky little bag of wombat fur. That's right. So that's going to be the fur. 
We've got in here, these are some chocolate covered almonds. That's going to be the wombat nose. And then these are just some little chocolate pearls in here. And they're going to be making the wombat eyes. But again, if you wanted to, you could just use chocolate chips. And then this is just a little bain marie of melted chocolate going on here. And this is what we're going to be using to stick the ears to the wombat. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. Cover the wombat surface and that will stick the fur to it. Have you ever met a real wombat before? Never. Have you? Yeah, held them. Little How baby big one. are they? Well, the little ones probably about that big, and then the the, the adults are, they're massive. They're like tanks, bigger than Indy. And they're oh yeah, way bigger. They like to burrow into your arm like the little baby. It was Aww. so cute. We've got our Anzac, cooled Anzac cookies back and then the chocolate has all melted here. You were asking me earlier, how do we make the little wombat ears? Yeah. So you use one of your Anzac cookies. Probably choose the one that is your least happy with. They all this look one. good to be they honest. They do, but... What I'm going to do is just sort of like break off a little bit and these are going to be sort of, you're going to be sticking them on to be the wombat ears. I see. You can, if you want, use like even scissors. And any extra little trimming bits we're going to be using for the wombat poo. Okay. So nothing is going to go to waste. Hey, that's a big one bit. Big ears, okay. There you go. That's how I do it at home. I wasn't going to do that, Dan, mm. but I'm glad you've shown Eat Your Wombat's ears. There we go. I probably I'm they're... loving them. Listen, this is your wombat. Yeah. That's your quite wombat. Big ears. So I've just got a paintbrush. So the melted chocolate is going to be both like glue and paint. I'm just going to attach it to wow. the side of your wombat's head. What was the first gig you went to? You know what, it was probably um, Mary Black, you know, the Irish yeah. folk singer, supported by the Rankin family, amazing, like, uh, Canadian band. Where um, was that, in that Liverpool? That was at the Philharmonic Hall in Liverpool. Wow, that would so be a nice good. little interlude in the playlist. Yeah, a song by Mary Black, um, No Frontiers. Uh-huh. Such a great song. That'll be on there. That'll be on there. Then, once that's stuck on, we just literally, Dan, start painting your wombat. Just oh, go around the side. The Rankin family, Gillis Mountain. This is like one that our family, like we sing every Christmas with Can like you break us into and all it the. Now? I took a trip up Gillis Mountain on a sunny summer's day. There were ruts in the road and the four-wheel drive spun its wheels in the rocks and the clay. No one in the world will know this song, basically, but all our family likes it. It's just will. a Christmas classic. And actually, another band I love who are, I didn't realise, but the singer is related to the Rankin family is, you know, the band Always. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Molly Rankin. I really like Always as well. And I was like, no way. I've covered my Anzac and ears in melted chocolate and I'm then just gonna scatter on the edible wombat fur. There we go. What, liberal with the fur? Quite liberal. Go liberal with the fur because we can always tap a little bit off. You were talking about Radiohead and Smashing Pumpkins. Which particular tracks would you want on the playlist? Probably go for Stand Inside Your Love. Yeah. One of the riffs we always play, like Cherub Rock from um, from Siamese Dream, we always play that in the like, practice room. That How's is a that? good looking wombat. Yeah. I'm going to take a chocolate covered almond for the nose, put a little bit of melted chocolate on the back of the almond, and then just position that on the, and just press it down. This is the nose. This is the nose, so we can smell. Apparently they've got a very good sense of smell. All right. They haven't got a very good sense of sight. No. Because they're nocturnal, but good sense of smell. Hmm. Beautiful. It's just got like a little plant <laughs> stick here, but you could use the end of like a paintbrush or... So just make like his little inner ears. Or you could like dab a bit of chocolate on. There we go. For his eyes, I'm just going to take a little cocktail stick and just make a little hole. I'm going to then just... Get two little chocolate pearls and pop them in. But if you wanted to, for a really wide-eyed looking wombat, you could oh. use chocolate chips. That's great. There he is, yeah. Mr. Wombat. You've obviously made your own one. Do you mm -hmm. reckon this is Murph or Tord? That's more Tord, I think. More Tord. Mm. So we've just got to make Murph, yeah. and then we will crumble up some of the leftover bits to make our wombat poos. Yeah, great. As you do. <laughs> I thought we could do them in like ice cube trays because they're square shaped. Any particular wombat poo shape preference? Oh, they that, that looks maybe the most cube like. They're they're great as well, and we get loads. We could do a mix. But maybe one of those. One of do those. Do a mix of these. Yeah. So do you remember the first single that you bought or album? Yes, um, it was on cassette. Um, it was Reckless by Brian Adams. Really? Yeah. We went to see him live, um, and yeah, I just I loved Reckless. It was so good. 
and Waking Up The Neighbours. Yeah. First single actually was um, Smells Like Teen Spirit because I remember hearing it. Well, I saw it on MTV, I heard it in a shop as well. And then I was like, oh, I love that. And I went and with my pocket money, like bought the, the single and became a huge Nirvana fan. A huge Nirvana fan. Did you have the poster? I actually had, um, I had Spice Girls. That was when I was like 10, 11. And then it gradually sort of, I got to the point where I was like, oh, got rid of all them, stopped playing the flute, started playing the drums and got Trend. like Nirvana and, uh, you know, Food Jerry, Fighters Jerry and Green Day. Over. Which Spice Girl track? More of the slow ballads or more of the... Yeah, I guess two become one. Yeah, that was a ring on it or something, wasn't it? Um, and my dad came back from somewhere and like he bought us a present in the airport and that was it. And then, you know, at that age, like we didn't have Spotify and stuff. You just listen to whatever album you got over, over and over and, and over, over again. again. So I'm going to do three of those shaped ones. You could also, if you wanted to, do this in one big tray and then cut little squares. This one looks like a bear. They've got a little, they look, a little bit like, of a bear look. They are like mini bears. Do you ever had an Anzac biscuit before? I don't think so. Like when we've been to Australia, we have, you know, we've had like Vegemite and yeah. I ate a whole spoonful of Tim that Tams. once. Tim Tams, yeah. So any Australian Wombat fans, if you wanted to make Wombat fur and you didn't have Bourbons, you could use Tim Tams. Are we doing Sorry. a mouth? Would you want to do a mouth? I suppose they should sing really, they shouldn't they? need to be able to sing a little bit. I reckon if you made it. Like two little lines maybe. Oh yeah. That's him more sort of like singing out loud. Oh. These are some little baby, oh. baby wombats. That was done with half the mixture. So if you wanted to make a little family of wombats, and then these are the wombat poo. Brilliant. Do you want to smash a wombat poo out? I'd love to. These are not coming out. They're not. <laughs> the poos are not coming yeah. out. Mm. There we go. <laughs> How do they taste? Mmm. Basically just like a little chocolate what did you bar. Put in there? That was just the sort of remnants of the Anzac, and then bits of the bourbon. Everything that you'd find in the wombat. Yeah. Hey. Um, which one? Who, who am I again? Oh, I made you. Okay. I'm gonna eat that first. Eat that you? first. Here we go. Oh, Dan, and the Dan's... ears stayed on. Yay! Look at that. Look at that. Structurally wow. sound. Are you good? How are you going to eat Rather. him? I think I'm just going to go straight for the face. To be honest. Straight in. Is it everything and more, Dan? Is it what you'd imagined an edible wombat to taste like? Yeah. It's it's, <laughs> it's beyond my wildest dreams. To be honest. Can you imagine if people? turn up on tour and they've made their own. So obviously the tour's on at the moment, so you will be actually going to Australia. Hopefully, yeah, if um, restrictions are lifted and we're allowed to go, that'll be in June. Yeah. We're going there. Um, and you're at the O2 here in London on the 15th of April. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I mean, just to be honest, after the last couple of years, I've not really been able to do any shows. It's just, just getting to play the, the, the new album, especially like live. And it kind of, it's, it's always the final, the final sort of piece in the puzzle of from you know making the songs recording them and then finally when you get on stage and you see the people's reactions well, and I like guess, that like, moment it's just knowing so which tracks particularly people resonate with mm. more yeah, is there yeah. any one that you particularly love on the album it's really hard it's always like picking your favorite kid yeah. or whatever but um <laughs> i'll go for people don't change people time does I think it you know is. we were asking you earlier. Yeah. I think that should be the lyric. So yeah, maybe that, that could be a good t-shirt. That t could be the one. Or an apron. Oh yeah. Although we've not worn aprons here today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dan, for being part of this baking playlist. Do like and subscribe. Go and support the wombats. Bake edible wombats. And I think, are you going to um, see oh, us out? Yeah. Give me a little bit of walkout music. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>